It is, I think, safe to say that the Eucharist is at the heart of Catholic life. The Greek term Eucharist means thanksgiving, which can help remind us that the Eucharist is not so much a thing, the consecrated bread and wine, as it is an action, the act of offering of worship to God, in the course of which the gifts of bread and wine that we offer are given back to us by God, now become the body and blood of Christ. To put this in traditional Catholic terms, the Eucharist is both a sacrifice and a sacrament. It is a sacrifice not simply because we present our offerings of bread and wine, which represent our joys and hopes, our sorrows and anxieties, all of our life and labor, but above all, the Eucharist is a sacrifice because in it we recall and have renewed among us by God the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. Jesus' offering of himself to the Father is joined to our offering of ourselves, so that we become part of his offering to the Father. As one of our Eucharistic prayers puts it, May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect. Because the sacrifice of Jesus, his total gift of himself to the Father, becomes present in the Eucharist, we believe that Jesus himself is present in the offered gifts of bread and wine. Because the Eucharist is a sacrifice, it is also a sacrament, an efficacious sign of Christ's real presence. The term the Catholic tradition has for over a thousand years used to speak of this presence is transubstantiation, which means a change of substance. This is simply a way of saying that we believe that in the Eucharist, the gifts of bread and wine truly become the body and blood of Christ, though all of their outward appearances remain those of bread and wine. Traditionally, this presence is not understood as a physical presence, by which I mean there's no detectable change on the molecular level of the gifts. You can put the consecrated gifts under a microscope and you won't see anything there but bread and wine. Rather, it's a metaphysical presence on the level of what a philosophy calls substance, what we might call the a thing's fundamental identity. Maybe the best way to put it is that it is a personal presence. That is, the risen Jesus in his full personhood becomes present to us in order to become our food. So the Eucharist is both a sacrifice by which we offer worship to God and a sacrament by which God offers himself to us so that we might share in God's divine life. The 20th century American writer Dorothy Day, who went from being a communist journalist to one of the most foremost Catholic advocates in America for peace and justice, lived a life of voluntary poverty in community, ministering to the poor and the homeless, and she saw the Eucharist as central to her own life as a Catholic. In a book she wrote in 1938, in which she gave an account of her conversion to Catholicism, Day reflected on the significance of the Eucharist in her own radical commitment to the poor. She wrote, Christ has taken the form of bread that we may more readily approach him, and feeding daily, assimilating Christ so that it is, so that it is not we, but Christ working in us, we may be more capable of understanding and realizing and loving him. The point of the Eucharist is to receive Christ into ourselves, so that in turn we may be received into Christ, become part of his body, be assimilated into him as we assimilate the Eucharistic gifts into ourselves. And to do this, Christ has become something that is central and necessary to our existence, food. They believe firmly that the Christ we encounter in the Eucharist is the same Christ who walked the earth 2,000 years ago. She writes, he is the same Jesus who walked the earth, 
who slept in the boat as the tempest arose, who hungered in the desert, who prayed in the garden, who conversed with the woman by the well, who rested at the house of Martha and Mary, who wandered through the cornfields, picking the ears of corn to eat. So in the Eucharist, it is Jesus in his full humanity and divinity who comes to be with us, just as he called disciples to himself 2,000 years ago. For Jesus to become our bread is for day perhaps the greatest example of the depths of his humility, the humility of which St. Paul wrote in the letter to the Philippians, how Christ did not deem equality with God something to be grasped at, but rather emptied himself. Christ empties himself into our humanity, he empties himself into death, and he empties himself into bread to become our food. Day writes, Christ is bread on our altars because bread is the staple of the world, the simplest thing in the world, something of which we eat and never get tired. We will always find wherever we go some staple which is called bread. Christ becomes our food, and not just our food, but the simplest sort of food, bread. By becoming our food and drink, Jesus has taken a place at the center of our lives. We eat to sustain life. It is the most elemental thing we do. For the life of the body, we need food. For the life of the soul, we need food. So the simplest, most loving, most thorough thing Christ could do before he died was to institute the Blessed Sacrament. Some of the most sublime and most complex theology ever written has been con written concerning the Eucharist. But Dorothy Day reminds us of the most central truth of this sacrament, that it is the food that our souls need in order to live. It is the most elemental aspect of our spiritual life, and it is Christ's gift of himself to us.